Hi everyone, Shane from Scoop Hash here, and there are more stories that have come forward about Ryan Haywood, and I also want to take the time to address the Adam Kovic situation, since we've been getting a lot of people asking us what is going on with him. But first, uh, we want to talk about the stories about Ryan. Um, all three of these that we talk about in this video were sent anonymously to a Twitter page called Victims of Ryan Haywood a place for these women to send their stories should they choose so and to send them anonymous, anonymously as well if they choose to do so as all three of these stories were. It's a really great page and uh, it's providing a safe place for these women to come forward and talk about and so we just wanted to take a moment to thank them for that and for and for providing that safe space. Now I want to tell these three stories first and then address what I see as a common thing throughout them as they all relate to each other. So when I don't speak directly to a story right afterwards, it isn't because I'm just moving on and not taking the time and giving them you know, any thought or consideration. It is because I'm going to address them all at once after they have been told at the end. So the first story was sent in a message chain to what I assume is the Twitter profile and whoever runs the Twitter profile in which the girl describes how Ryan and her began talking when she was 18 and while she never ended up sleeping with him she does say that he started making suggestive comments towards her. According to her story these comments lasted for about three weeks before she began to reciprocate them and send them back until she eventually felt weird and guilty about it and so she stopped engaging with them. The second story is of is of another woman who started having a relationship with Ryan as well when she was 20. And like the story before, she did not sleep with him. She was a part of a Snapchat group that, when Ryan joined the platform, began to talk to him, thanking him for the content and what it had meant to them over the years. Eventually, after the excitement of being able to talk with a content creator they loved, they decided to send him nudes. He began to send nudes back to these girls, and we don't know if it was with all of them or not, um, we're pretty sure that it was just a few of them that sent nudes initially, but we don't know what happened with the rest of the group. This became the norm for them, and one girl even paid to fly out to sleep with Ryan. And after a while, a bunch of them stopped engaging with Ryan. Then at RTX 2018, she, en she ended up being called up on stage during a live gameplay and was sat right next to Ryan to play what uh, she believes was Forza. According to her story, he had his hands on her the whole time, even put his, putting his arm around her and was teasing her uh, for her gameplay. Sure, in another context, this could maybe be seen as innocent, but given their prior relationship, it seems unlikely that it was, also given the current information that we have now and the lens of hindsight. The third story was a a girl who interacted with him on Snapchat as well, and Ryan began to turn the conversation sexual as he always did. And eventually she began to respond to these comments, and they began to flirt and sext. He told her the same story about his wife and his sex life not being there at all, and all those things he had told so many of the girls before. Eventually she stopped interacting with him, stopped the sexting um, along the same lines of the past two girls as well. So, first off, thank you to all these women who have shared their stories. Your bravery continues to amaze us, and we hope that by sharing them, you are finding some sense of relief. We know that these wounds take a lot of time to heal, and we hope that by talking about them, it has helped you along that path to healing. Second, yes, none of these girls from these stories slept with Ryan, but that does not disqualify what he was most likely trying to do with them. You may say that the absence of sex does not make them victims, but I disagree. He still made an effort, he still manipulated them, and he still tried to keep the relationships going. In almost every story that has come forward and that we have heard, they mention how he would either tell them he wasn't seeing anyone else or that there was maybe one or two or a few other girls. That was obviously a lie. That was a blatant lie, and whether you agree with me or not, that's not okay. Finally, these women are aware of their mistake in sleeping with a married man. We are not here condoning that kind of behavior. But, as we said in the last video, that doesn't excuse what happened afterwards. Look, so many of these girls were young, and we want to know how many of us never made big mistakes at the age of 18. Probably none of us, right? Even then, as I said in my last video, that should not disqualify what Ryan did to them or change the fact that they are victims. They can have initiated their relationship and still be victims. Ryan's actions are independent of that. His lying and manipulating still make them a victim. 
If you define the word differently, so be it. But that's how we are defining it. And we ask that you respect that and you respect our opinion on the matter. We know that many of you have different opinions on this subject than us, and that's okay. We appreciate your opinion and your right to have it. We want to create a place of civil discourse, and we ask that if anyone is incapable or unwilling to be civil in their comments, that you remove yourself from the conversation. We want to hear you. We really do. Your voice deserves to be heard, but we ask that you be respectful towards us and others in doing so. No progress or change can be made unless all of us are understanding and open our ears to one another. If you wish, you can always reach out to us on our social channels if there's something you want to talk about. Okay, now it's time to talk about Adam Kovic. The truth is, the truth is that there hasn't really been an update that we have seen since last week when he left Funhouse and Rooster Teeth. What we do know is that a series of explicit pictures he sent to a male catfish were leaked, and one or a few of them were including his wife. We don't know if she consented to having her nude picture sent to someone else, but given how his statement implies she was unaware, we assume she didn't. He took some of these pictures in the Funhouse office, which is a breach of conduct and his grounds for termination right there. And also, if he sent a nude picture of his wife without her knowledge or consent, that is also illegal. It is weird how Adam has kind of slipped out of the narrative over the past week, given how Ryan's situation just gets worse and worse, but that doesn't make it any less bad. We don't want to compare the two events, and we don't condone what Adam did. But the other members of Funhouse have said they feel betrayed and hurt by the news, and that does not make it any better. What he did was bad, and it is bad separately from Ryan. We don't want to sit here and say, well, at least Ryan, what Ryan did is worse. Adam isn't that bad. There is no point in minimizing what Adam did in comparison to a separate event. They both did bad things. We know that Raul Coley has expressed some issue he had with Adam, and even Lawrence has given hints as to something going on behind the scenes before he left. But we don't know if that is related to this or was something separate. It looks like maybe Adam was just being a shitty person. Either way, he's gone. He's not at Funhouse anymore, and we doubt he's going to be coming back. If there is any more news or information that is shared about it, you can be sure we'll put in a video to let you all know about what's going on. We appreciate all of you who have come to watch our videos, and we appreciate those of you who have watched and stopped. We know that our content won't resonate with everyone. We hope that we can continue to foster a positive environment and mindset, and we hope that we can all, as a community of Rooster Teeth, help those that are still around to move past this and create something even better. We are sure that this story isn't over yet, and we know t that together, Rooster Teeth, its people, and its community can get through it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and share it with others. It sucks to keep talking about these things, but these women deserve to be heard. We won't stop reporting until we feel we have done them justice. For all your news and more, be sure to check back in here with Scoop Passion.